Today's a good day. Hallelujah. Today we're going to be looking at the book of Ezekiel. So if you have your Bible, grab your Bible. <clears throat> if you followed us on YouTube, then we've been doing a series connected to our daily Bible reading throughout the year. So we start in Genesis chapter 1, and by the end of the year, we'll be at the end of the Bible, we'll be in Revelation. But right now, we're actually in the Ezekiel. And so I'm going to be looking at Ezekiel today. Let me just get this straight here. And then I'm going to jump into it. So take a second, grab your Bible. And get ready. It's going to be powerful. Today we're going to look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel has a bunch of amazing stuff in it. Every chapter is totally amazing. We're coming live today. Today is what day? Friday. And uh, from the Oak Center. So welcome to the Oak Center right here in Silver City, New Mexico, our brand new place. Now we're just renting this uh, location as our first place. But this week we went out into the community and started inviting people to join us. What is the Oak Center? The Oak Center is a place where people can come and become Oaks of Righteousness. Because we believe, uh, well we know God spoke to us about a generation that he called the Rising that will rise above the rest, watch this, to the upper crust of society. Just like Daniel did, just like Joseph did. And then as they become one of six million oaks, that's what we're believing God for, six million oaks of righteousness around the earth, so as to seriously greater the earth. And so, God spoke to us about starting an Oak Center here and very strategic. Now, man might not have chosen Silver City, New Mexico, but God did. And so he sent us here and in this, it's a small town and out of silver is going to come gold. And the disciples will first be called Oaks in Silver City and it's going to be powerful. So we had some, some family show up with some kids this week. And we just started to prophesy and minister to them, and we're excited. Tomorrow, we're going to do our first Saturday at the Oak Center. And uh, we're going to start by calling it the, the Rock, which is Raising Oaks Kids Club. And uh, then we'll also be meeting with a, uh, a sister church in Deming, just down the road, about an hour away. Tomorrow, where we're going to be proposing to do some, some stuff with them in their city. And then it'll only spread, but we're going to start here. It's going to be powerful. We're also going to have Sunday church. So if you happen to live anywhere in Grant County, New Mexico, or anywhere nearby, and you want to join us, we're going to come together. And this place is going to be a house of prayer and a house of praise where the, the presence of God can come, the fire of God can live, and it's a saving station until Jesus comes back. In the name of Jesus, it's a permanent place that out of silver will always come prayer and praise and a place where the fire of God can reside. And many, many people are going to come here. Many, many oaks will come out of here. You know what the world thinks is worthless? God sees gold. And so there'll be people from all ages come here, receive the word of God, receive the, the water of the word, and grow up and become powerful people that will be launched around the world. Amen? And this is only the first. We'll see what else God does. Amen? But today let's look at the book of Ezekiel. Now the book of Ezekiel is amazing like I already said. And none of these, I'm not an expert in any of this. I just love the word. And I'm a teacher and preacher of the word. And what we're doing is as we go, the word of God is alive. 
And so every single morning I get up, the Bible says His mercies are new every morning. He loves us. I wake up in a world where God is big, not where the devil is big. The devil is here, but he's not big compared to God. I wake up in a world where God is big. The power of God is big. I love the voice of God. Jesus said, pray in this way, God, give me my daily bread. And he said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So every single day, God is speaking. When you wake up in the morning, God is right there in love with you, ready to talk. So as we read through, he speaks to us. And then in these broadcasts, we're just, we're just sharing some of the things that we're seeing. And so you could get a lot out of Ezekiel. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> so much in here from start to finish as a whole. It's an amazing, amazing book. And, uh, you know, I love chapter one, two, three. If you look at mine, it's all highlighted. Those first few chapters are amazing. But um, I want to read from chapter 14 today. It's so hard because every... Oh, Lord have mercy. Well, let me start in chapter 13. I'm going to go into chapter 14 and then uh, just link it up with some stuff. And I, want to, and I want to pray for healing today. I want to pray for people's healing today, deliverance today from anything and everything. So if that's you, you're hungry for God, you're in love with God, then just rest. Forget about everything else and sit and let's enjoy the word of God. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. We love you, Lord. Speak to us today. Teach us today. Father, I thank you that your word is alive and powerful as it goes out. It goes into people's hearts, Lord. And you know everybody watching. You know what they have need of. And so, whatever their need be, Lord, I thank you that you meet them. You speak to them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's look at chapter 13. Now, in the book of Ezekiel, you know, if I just gave you kind of an overview, and again, I'm not an expert, I'm just, I, I, Jesus said, we teach what we know. And so I'm going to teach and preach what I know. And so God is going to speak, but I'm not pretending to be an expert on everything, but um, Ezekiel 1 through 11, is going to be a lot of accusations and then in chapter 11, it talks about how God's going to give them a new heart. So there's hope. So the first 11 chapters, a lot of, um, you know, just stuff they're doing wrong. And God is, ah, Lord have mercy. Listen, love will tell you the truth. Love will tell you the truth. You know, if I had a booger on my nose <laughs> hanging right there, my wife would tell me because she loves me enough. She's not afraid. Somebody who doesn't love me my, or, or just their, you know, they feel uncomfortable telling me for whatever reason. But if, if someone is running headlong into a collision, running towards the edge of a cliff and you love them, then you say something. And so God points out stuff that's wrong because he loves us. But he doesn't, the thing is, he doesn't do it in a condemning way. He does it because he loves us. And that is all the difference. So he does show them a bunch of wrong stuff. Chapter 11, he's going to, there's hope. There's a new heart coming. Then there's judgments from chapter 12 through 24. Lots of stuff. Then chapters 25 through 32, there's more judgments. The judgments on the nations. Um, chapter 33 is a pivotal chapter judgment on Jerusalem but then there's hope and a lot of good stuff in the second half of the book chapter 34 through 48 there's all sorts of good news so there's always you know in these books Isaiah Jeremiah uh, Ezekiel very heavy but there's always hope but here in chapter 13 watch my my chapter the title says woe to foolish prophets and you saw this a lot in Jeremiah as well. False prophets speak lies. And I, I did a whole lesson on this. But lies bind and lies blind. So we're not interested in just telling people uh, 
sugar-coated messages that make them feel good. The truth is what people is what sets people free. In verse eight, wow, Lord have mercy. Verse two says, "Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who prophesy, and say to those who prophesy out of their own heart, hear the word of the Lord." There's a difference between the word of the Lord and you know our own fantasies, our own imagination. We want the word. Of the Lord because the word of the Lord is truth. The word of the Lord is what sets free. The word of the Lord is good, but it does hurt sometimes and it, and it can hurt the flesh and it definitely hurts sin and it definitely hurts the devil. And so he wants to deceive people into, into just loving lies. But when people love lies, then they actually get in bondage. Watch what happened in verse eight. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have spoken nonsense, and envisioned lies. Therefore, I am against you. Now, something that's powerful is that the good news is, is when we are against God, He is against us. That doesn't mean He doesn't love you. But if you buck up against truth with lies, he doesn't change. He still is truth. You buck up against the light with darkness, he doesn't change. He's still light. But the good news is if we'll just return, if we'll actually repent, then he just pours out blessing on us. So what we're going to do today is look at some of the, uh, some, some, what, what happens when people love wickedness. But then what's going to happen is, is there's a turnaround. And if people will turn from their wickedness, then everything that happens because of wickedness, like let's say we're going to look at a list. We're going to look at, we're going to see what happens when people love lies, when they love wickedness. All these things start happening. But the good news is, is if we'll turn then oh, you can actually get healed and delivered from all that stuff. So some people are, don't like reading the judgments and, and all that. We're going to look at some stuff, but, and we're going to look at it in the New Testament. But I want you to see that in, and just be open, because if the Holy Ghost points, puts his finger on something, Instead of just being afraid of that thing and afraid of confronting it, let God confront it because what happens is, is if you let him put his finger on it and then you turn and you repent of it, which you can't do that in your own strength. You just, it, that it's his grace that even empowers you to repent, that even allows you to see that something is wrong. But then if you allow him to show you, then actually he'll take it from you. He'll heal you from that. He'll deliver you from that. Woo! That's why I said this is going to be a healing service. All right, so let me jump in. Praise God. So chapter 13, he's, he's, he's um, addressing stuff. Now watch what happened. Verse 17, and he's telling Ezekiel, he's saying, Likewise, son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own heart prophesy against them. So why, why was Ezekiel sent to prophesy against them? Because what they're doing is wickedness. And if you look down at verse 22, you're going to see it says, because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and you have strengthened the hands of the wicked so that he does not turn from his wicked way to save his life. So those who actually who prophesy lies actually sadden the hearts of the righteous and strengthen the hands of the wicked. Does that sound like the devil? Yes, the devil comes to steal, kill, destroy. The thief comes to choke the word. And he even sends the word through a... a um, False doctrines, doctrines of demons. Doctrines of demons is not just demon devil worship. Obviously, that would that would be you know outright wickedness. But 
doctrines of demons are more subtle than that. The first thing you learn about the devil in Genesis chapter 3 is that he's subtle. He comes to infiltrate the church, and how does he do it with lies? Something that sounds right, but it's not right. There is a way that seems right unto man, but the ways thereof are the ways of death. Now, of course, that involves, you know, oh, you can go do drugs and it'll be okay. Yeah, that's a, a lie from hell. But there's even more subtle things than that that come in and choke the joy of the Lord in the righteous. Why does the devil want to steal the joy? Because the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. So look at that. So he sends Ezekiel to confront these lies because these lies are actually choking the word of, in the righteous. They're choking the joy. And look at that. Verse 22 says, you made the heart of the righteous sad. So what does that mean? You're, you're, what's the devil doing there? It's like he's, he's stealing the strength of the righteous. It's like, um, like, like uh, draining them of their strength. Come on now. Hallelujah. So this word today is to come and give you strength. Impart strength. Encourage you. Inspirit you. Come on now, come on now, come on now. Listen to the word today. The word of the Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As you listen to the word, faith is coming. Encouragement is coming. You're being filled with the power of God. Woo! Instead of the, the lies that bind and the lies that block. You know, they're subtle. The news media, almost 1,000% are going to do nothing but speak what the enemy's doing, what the, what's going on in the curse, or they're going to speak out outright lies. And if that's all you listen to, even if you technically know the truth, you need to be hearing the truth. Faith comes how? By hearing. You have to, you have, to have a lifestyle of listening to the word. Not just reading, listen. This is listening right now. You're listening to someone else prophesy the word of God to you. The truth that makes free. Hallelujah. So he sent Ezekiel to, to confront this stuff and prophesy against them. Why? Because they were thieves and God is passionate about his people. Watch how God said it in... Oh Lord have mercy. So these are actually witchcraft spirits. They're, they're sent to, to, uh, to, to rob, steal, kill, destroy, to control, empower people to continue in their wickedness and idolatry is what we're going to see in, in chapter 14. Look at verse 19, chapter 13, 19. You will profane me up, and will you profane me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread? Killing people who should not die, keeping people alive who should not live, by your, listen, by your lying to my people who listen to lies. Listen to that. You know, the devil is not as big as people uh, make out to be. Hollywood is a liar. Uh, you know, the devil likes to make movies about himself and showing himself as big and bad. Paul said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What was the weapon of his warfare? The word of God. The truth. The truth sets free. The truth makes you free. You're a free person when you know the truth. So what binds people? Look at, by your lying to my people who listen to to lies. So all you got to do to stay free is just don't listen to the lies. Amen? Okay? So, and what's the remedy to get set free from lies? Or what's the remedy to set people free from lies? Bring the truth. Hallelujah. The truth is like a hammer. Bam! 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 It sets people free. Praise God. Hallelujah, verse 23. No, I want to, I want to look at um, verse 20. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against your magic charms by which you hunt souls there like birds. So these, 
these these things, these demons, these people, these witches, these uh, spiritualists, these um, promoters of wrong of wrong doctrines. What do they do? They hunt souls in a wrong way. And what does God say? Look at that verse 20. I will tear them from your arms and let the souls go. That's a violent spirit. Uh, John the Baptist operated in a violent spirit. He didn't go around beating people up like this. That's not what I'm talking about. But in the spirit, uh, Jesus said about John's the Baptist ministry, he said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the violent, the kingdom of God suffers violent, and the violent take it by force. There was something going on in the spirit. You know, if 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 uh, if a thief grabbed my son and tried to take him, and I spotted him and I heard my son scream or whatever, I would become violent. And it's not because I'm raging, just a, I'm a raging lunatic. It's the love inside of me. The Father's love is going to become violent, not to hurt the person, but to set the person to, to to set my son free. You see the difference? Now, if I have to hurt him to set my son free, I will. But that's his own fault. He can he can let go quickly and and experience less harm. But I'm, I'm going to become violent in this case. And then I'm going to have to do something physical to set my physical, my real son free in a real situation. But it's not because I hate the person. It's because I love my son. Do you see the difference? God loves people. So John the Baptist was violent in the spirit, in the sense of he was passionate because of the passion of God, the zeal of God. Jesus talked about, in the Old Testament, talks about the zeal of God. So here, God says, I will tear them from your arms and let the souls go. So there's a violence in the spirit when you love people. And of course, I'm not talking about yelling. I'm not talking about hitting. Uh, you have to have... You have to understand love to, to know what I'm talking about. But you're going to go. You're going to do something. That's why they call it the passion of the Christ. Jesus died on a cross because of his passionate love for people. See, it's totally opposite how we operate in the spirit from how people operate in the flesh. Hallelujah. But, you know, one time um, after a time of prayer, Jessica and I, we had prayed the night before. And then I heard in my spirit, we will take our children back from you no matter what the cost. And that's the bear anointing. That's like a bear robbed of her cubs goes after and it's going to do it, it. There's just there's no stopping a bear who's been robbed of her cub, robbed of her cubs. And so. Uh. Again, Ezekiel 13, verse 20 says, I will tear them from your arms and I'll let the souls go. Amen. So God is passionate about people. Okay, let's look at a little bit at chapter 14. And chapter 14 is what I, I said we're going to look at, but there's idolatry. And idolatry, let me say it this way, setting up idols in your heart will cause you to stumble into iniquity. And then what's going to happen is today we're going to pray for healing and deliverance for people. And because it's what I said, when, when, people, when we have idols in our lives, it brings about all sorts of wickedness. It brings on judgment and, and, and condemnation and bad fruit and bondage. But at, at any point, if anyone will turn to the Lord then they get set free from everything. So when, as we read and you're going to see the negative stuff, don't get down as you read the negative stuff. Almost take it like a list of, whoa, whoa, I, uh, I, I can get free from that. Or thank God that I'm free from that. Or hallelujah, anybody that I ever encounter that's struggling with that, they, they can get set free from that. Okay, let's look at it that way. I'm going to read a little bit of chapter 14. Now some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat before me, and the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, 
Look at this. Look at this. These men have set up their idols in their hearts and put before them that which causes them to stumble into iniquity. That's the phrase that I just said. I'm going to read it again. Because this is what people do. And I said at the start, but sugarcoating, there's no there, sugarcoating a Christian message doesn't set people free. The truth is what sets people free. So if people have idols in their lives, then that is a real problem, and and we need to get set free from it. Amen. Jesus, when he talked about the seed, he said that the seed goes into the ground, and, and but if it's sown among the thorns then the weeds come up and choke the word so in this culture and in any culture if a preacher never addresses idolatry and and those things that people uh, technically they're hearing the word and and good news and at first they're full of joy and excited about it but eventually all that stuff is going to choke the word so we have to address these things. Son of man, these men, look, this is what God said, have set up their idols in their hearts and put them and put before them that which causes them to stumble into iniquity. Hallelujah. In verse 6, he said, Repent, turn away from your idols. And turn your faces from all your abominations. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 7. For any one of the house of Israel or of the strangers who dwell in Israel who separates. Look at this. Who separates himself from me and sets up, and sets up his idols in his heart. And puts them. Puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity. So. I'm just showing you this. This is how it works, okay? So people set up idols in their lives, and then there's going to be judgment. So you're going to see a lot of that in Isaiah, Jeremiah, and here in Ezekiel. A lot of judgment. But before that, God shows them the issues, and He's asking them to repent of this. And then there is hope. And there's going to be hope because God's always going to prophesy hope. And there's good news. I want to, because some people are saying, well, that's Old Testament. Let's go to the New Testament. And God whispered this verse to me a few days ago, Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1. And so this isn't only in the Old Testament, this is in the New Testament. And it's a problem. And then we're going to, and then we're going to see how to get set free from it. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1, verse 22 says, professing to be wise, they became fools. Professing to be wise they became fools. This is in the New Testament. There, this is going on in the world today. This is in the same chapter where Paul said, I'm not, not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. The just shall live by faith. But in verse 18, he said, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness that's what we're talking about the truth makes free so when people suppress the truth in unrighteousness what does that mean in a wrong heart then they actually cause bondage verse 19 because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them so there's a lot of people who know the truth but they reject the truth and then all this wickedness comes into the lives watch what happens Watch what happens, because this is what I said. I said we're going to read some things, and it's going to list some negative stuff. But what we're doing is we're saying, okay, okay, God, I let, I, I let you. I say, God, okay, Lord, if there's idolatry in my life, if I've allowed lies to come in, whatever it is, God, I'm open. Speak to me. Show me. And then as we read this stuff, this is all stuff that if anybody that's listening or, or you know anybody, that this stuff is going on in their life, the, this is what the truth can set you free from. Hallelujah. So it's almost like going to a doctor. And, and in the natural 
they say, well, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. When you read it in the Bible, if you come with an, a humble heart and a repentant heart, then you, when you read the list, it actually isn't a list of condemnation saying, this is wrong in you, this is wrong in you, this is wrong in you, this is wrong in you. It's actually a list of healing and deliverance. It's kind of like uh, 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 when, you, when anyone turns to the Lord, then the veil is taken away, but then God says, okay, I'm going to take this from you. Woo! I'm going to set you free from this. Woo! I'm gonna, let me heal you of this. Woo! Let me take this away from you so that you're not bothered by it ever again. Hallelujah. It's a list of deliverance. It's good stuff. But that's if somebody repents. Amen? But this stuff is in the world, and it is ugly, and it needs to be repented of. Therefore, uh, Romans 1.24, Therefore God gave them up to uncleanness. So when somebody sets up idols in their hearts, then it, it leads them into iniquity. The lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So if you're, if, if you're coming out of a lifestyle, or if you're just coming to Jesus, you're just finding this video, then as we read this, you might be able to see, oh man, that, that's talking about me. I live that kind of lifestyle. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pray today, and Jesus can set you free from all sorts of stuff, you know, maybe you're dealing with depression or hurting yourself or just um, uh, a track record of broken relationships. That stuff can be, you can be set free. And as he talks about this stuff, it actually reveals, oh man, if, that's, if it describes your lifestyle, then you need to let, um, let God call you on it and say, okay, God, okay, whoa, I didn't even realize that how wrong that, that I was wrong. So Lord, I'm sorry. My life is now yours, Jesus. I'm sorry. And then as we read all this, uh, this list of bad stuff, you're going to see it. Then he's going to start setting you free from that. Wow. That's the good news. So because they loved lies instead of truth, they loved unrighteousness instead of righteousness. But if you're born again, if you've given your life to Jesus, that's not you anymore. So now you're going to get set free from all this stuff. Watch this, verse 26. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. So when people love wickedness, then they start loving all sorts of, of perverted things. Even their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. What does that mean? Women start lusting after women. That's, that's, that's not a function of... of natural birth that's a function of at some point somewhere um, unrighteousness love for unrighteousness comes in and whether somebody does that purposely or not it's it can it'll give birth to these things same thing men start to lust after men instead of women and then commit shameful acts and then look receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due so if I if I cut myself here what's gonna happen blood is gonna come out that's not because God hates me that's just uh, 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 um, how the earth goes is, is if you cut get cut whether here 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 wherever blood comes out so same thing uh, you you do unrighteousness and it, it gives birth to other stuff verse 28 even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. So that's not you anymore. Say, that's not me anymore. I love God. God, I'm in love with you. God, I encountered you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, my life is, you, in, is, is yours now. So it's not like, this is not you anymore. Amen? If it is, then change now. Because he's about to list a whole bunch of bad fruit that comes out of this lifestyle. But look at the key they did not like to retain God in their knowledge me I love God I love God I love him more than anybody and anything I love him more than anybody and anything and that keeps me healthy that keeps me whole that keeps me sane that keeps me blessed that keeps me happy 
but because they didn't want God, then God gave them over to a debased mind. If you refuse to have God in your mind, then at some point God doesn't have a choice but to go ahead and let you start thinking uh, debased things. That means um, brute things. That means you start acting just like any other animal. To do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness. So unfitting means things that th this isn't normal for you. It isn't, but, you be, but because someone's given over to debased mind, they think this is normal. And it isn't. But li now listen to this thing, and this is what we can be set free from. Because all the things he's going to list are things that, that, that are a part of a debased mindset when we reject God. But let's go ahead and for, let, let's go ahead and repent of that right now. And then anything we read there, we can just say, okay, Lord, thank you for, for my deliverance from that. Thank you for my healing from that. Thank you for my deliverance from that lifestyle. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So let's repent. Say, God, I love you. Jesus, you're my Lord. I love you. I want everything that you have for me. I only want to live for you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I love you. I love to retain you in my knowledge. I never want to be separate from you. Thank you for being so gracious, so kind. Know this, that he's very patient. He's so patient because he loves us. So he walks through it with us. So he's not going to run away. He doesn't hate you. If you mess up, but we need to commit, but it, we need to commit to that relationship. So I love you, Lord. My life is yours. Set me free from anything and everything that is not right. That's from a debased mindset. Due to any wrongdoing, whether willful or unwillful, whether I understood it or not, Lord, whether I was just born into a family or a culture, or I adopted it myself at some point. Set me free today, God. Heal me today, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, uh, whether, you've been a, whether you've been a Christian for one day or for many, many years, receive this. Don't think that I'm only talking to somebody who's coming out of a, a, a lifestyle that's totally different. Because anything you read here, you can get healed or delivered from. Amen. I'm going to just, before I do this, before we read everything we're going to get set free from, let me just read a couple encouraging verses, okay? Proverbs chapter 1. It says, wisdom cries out. Jesus is calling out. God calls out. He sends preachers to call out saying, hey, I love you. Hey, I have good news for you. Hey, I have a good life for you. <clears throat> and in verse 23, he said, if you'll just turn at my rebuke, surely I'll pour out my spirit on you. I'll make my word known to you. So as anybody turns to him today, you get set free. In uh, Acts chapter 2, it, where Paul preached the sermon on the day of Pentecost, he said that the, this day will come, that whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, and God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. That means you don't just live a normal life anymore. You live with Him inside of you. And, in, and, and then just last encouraging verse, but in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, it says that Jesus went about healing those who are sick and delivering those who are oppressed of the devil for God was with Him. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So as we hear this good news, Jesus is the healer. Jesus sets us free in Jesus' name. So, as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, that's not me. God gave them over to a debased mind. That's what we're getting set free from. To do those things which are not fitting. So Lord, as, we, as we're done doing these things, then we're going to get set free from all, all this stuff. Watch. They were being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness. Which covetousness means... <clears throat> Lust for other things. It means love of money. And there's nothing good about it. It's, it's, an, it's a lust. It's a, it's a desire that is never fulfilled. It's not a fun lifestyle. So some people think it's a fun. They, 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 they um, equate that with fun. And it isn't. It's a burning desire that never is fulfilled. 
in God, you can actually be content. You can actually be free from that burning desire that, that it's never happy. You could have sex a million times and it's, it, it's still there. It's a, you, could, you want this new watch and then as soon as you get it, you, it, it's not fulfilled. It's never fulfilled because it, it's just not God. Covetousness, maliciousness, malice, that's an evil, uh, evil desire for others. Uh, a, a desire for others to get hurt. Like that's nothing healthy or good about that. Amen? Let's be free from that. Anything you hear and you say, that's me, get free right now. Just say, okay, that was me, Lord. Yes, thank you. Set me free from that, Lord. Set me free from malice. Set me free from covetous. That, oh, he just read that. That's me, Lord. I'm sorry. I'm guilty of that. Set me free, God. This is our freedom day. Full of envy, murder. Murder isn't only murdering, like killing somebody, but you can murder someone with your mouth. You can murder their reputation. You can uh, murder them in your heart and mind. This is a spirit, and it's not good to live with that. There's nothing wonderful about any of these things. So just be free. Strife. Strife. Where, where, the, where strife is, is the manifest presence of the devil himself. Nothing to be afraid of. Just stop. Just don't yield to it. Just close your mouth and get free from it. Amen? Deceit. That's lies. Evil-mindedness. I don't want a mind full of evil. There's nothing fun about that. <laughs> Come on, man. This is good. We're getting free of all this. They're whispers. You know, if you're whispering all the time, it's because you have something to hide. So much better to be free. Live in the light. I have nothing to hide. Backbiters. That's hurting people behind their backs, talking about people behind their backs. Again, this has to, all of these things are shaded in lies and darkness. And where there's darkness and all this stuff, you don't even know it. But inside, you're, you're, it's, you're living with ugly stuff that's just tormenting. There's no peace in it. So instead, get set free from all this. Haters of God, that's not me. Violent, that's not me. Proud. Proud is to think highly of yourself, more highly than you ought to. And, and, and you're always having to, to pretend to be something and try and live up to something. There's a lot of pressure involved in it. Humility actually sets you free. Boasters. Inventors of evil things. You know, the devil only knows how to pervert, destroy, steal what something else is, somebody else's. There's nothing creative about it. You know, young people are, are fooled into thinking this stuff is cool and they want it, but it's actually debased. It actually means, if you have to steal, it means you don't have anything. If you have to destroy, it's because you don't have creativity. And you were created in God's image. There's something in you that wants to create. The devil was, was, was separated forever from that, so all he, want, all he can do now is because he's just full of lust. He just wants to, to take and, and destroy and pervert and, and because anything he takes only becomes uh, deteriorates, he, he, all, he, he's on this quest to just take and take and take. And anything he puts his hands on will never become more beautiful. So he'll never love it. So he'll never like it. He'll never be satisfied. Somebody say, that's not me. God, if you'll let him, lift up your hands right now. If that's you at all, God would love to give you creativity, to create, to make things beautiful. That's your dis destiny. Disobedient to parents. So I'm in Romans chapter 1, one verse 30. Uh, say, that's not me. There's a promise in the Bible. It says that, that um, those who honor their mother and their father will live long on the earth. Hallelujah. And have a good life. So there's nothing cool about being disobedient. It's, it's a, again, a deception of the enemy. If that's been your, your um, lifestyle of just being rude and talking bad about your parents, then, then I encourage you to, to repent of that. Start letting God and say, God, okay, set me free, God. And, and he might have to heal you of stuff, and that's okay. He'll help you, okay? I'm not telling you that you have to 
but he'll be gracious and help you. But if you need to get free of that, then it's marked right there as one of these things that we're getting free of. So just say, okay, God, okay, God, God I'm sorry for having hated my parents for so long or been rude or all the, the wrong stuff. And, and maybe, it, it, maybe it seems justifiable. Maybe they hurt you. And I'm not telling you that, that's a, that I know anything about that necessarily for you. But, and you can be honest with God. Say, okay, God, I, you know, they hurt me at some point or whatever. And so I'm going to need your help. But you can make a first step of committing. Okay, God, I'm, not gonna, I'm going to stop talking bad about them. Start show me more about that Lord, and you'll help me, and I'll get free of this. Amen. Oh Lord, there's so much we're getting free from. Amen. It's good stuff. Undiscerning. Woo. That means you don't without understanding. That's like you you hit a one wall, then you turn around, you hit another wall, you turn around, you hit another wall, and you're banging your head against the wall. Not a good life. Never getting ahead. Never prospering. Relationships never working. We can, we're free from that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus, now we have the mind of Christ. That is your lot. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Untrustworthy. That means you're not worthy of any trust. So God can't give you much influence, much power, much money. Unloving. To love is to live. If you're not loving, you're not living. You could have all the things in the world, but without love, you actually don't even know what life is like. So, uh, not good. Unloving. But say, that's not me. Say, because I've repented, because Jesus isn't my life, I'm learning about love. And it changes everything. Unforgiving. That means holding grudges against people. Refusing to let people go. And that actually keeps you in bondage more than it keeps them in bondage. Because they might not even know that you're holding unforgiveness about them. They might be totally free. They think that you love them. But inside of you, you have knots. You have issues. That's you. So Christ sets you free from that today. Unmerciful. Merciful. We want to be like God. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death not only do the same but approve of those who practice them. So Ezekiel, you know, I'm coming back to the book of Ezekiel, but he was sent to confront this stuff, to set people free. And so in the New Testament, we just read from the book of Romans. And in, in Hosea, God said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So as a preacher, as a teacher, we're sent to preach the word. Not to act like I'm better than anybody. I'm not better than anybody. But to speak the word. And then as you receive it, then the Holy Ghost sets you free from all this stuff. So we're not like these people. We don't hold on to lies. We don't suppress the truth and unrighteousness. We don't... Uh, reject God in our minds. We're, we repent of all that. We've given our life to Jesus. And so all this stuff that it just said that the people are filled with, we're free from. Amen? Hallelujah. And a lot of time, because I started by saying this is going to be a healing meeting, a lot, or, or, that people are going to get healed, a lot of times physical sicknesses are linked the things that are going on inside our heart and mind and soul. And they're rooted in the, these wrong ways of thinking that we don't have to try and work ourselves into getting uh, forgiven from it. Just receive and repent and let the mind of Christ set you free. And then a lot of stuff you get healed from, you, and, and you're just like, wow, I just got healed of that. But way down deep, it could have very likely just linked is something that God sets you free from changes how you think and your life is never the same and you also experience uh, a healing in your body amen wow all right let me pray for you hallelujah lift up your hands father thank you for your word we love your word you're so good father thank you 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 that you love us enough to send your word and that it's not to condemn us. It heals us. It sets us free and we thank you. Lord, I thank you for everybody watching. 
anybody watching in the future. Lord, I speak blessing, and uh, Lord, you know where they're at. If you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, then just do it right now. Commit your life to Him. And then everything I've been talking about, you can start to experience. Say, Jesus, be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe you died for me. And you were raised from the dead. Come into my heart. Set me free of all this stuff, Lord. I give everything to you. I love you. In Jesus' name. Now you can look forward to his coming. He's coming again soon. And when he comes, you'll live with him forever. In the meantime, get a Bible. Start to read. Be open. Develop a prayer life. Prayer life is just communion with God. Find a good, strong local church. And uh, become a part and grow in God. Amen. If you're at all in the Silver City, New Mexico area, southwest New Mexico, then come. Come find us. We're going to have church this Sunday. The Oak Center. 601 North Bullard Street. Sweet B in the hub. Where it's all happening. Hallelujah. We do have a new website. Uh, Theoakcenter.org You can go and find out everything over there. And uh, it is being built. So if you want to give to the Oak Center, then you still go to Jesusworld.tv but I should have that, uh, the new links I'll put up here within a day or two. So watch out, hook up, go find the new website. And, uh, and then it, keep watching, listen, read your Bible, pray every day, and you will grow, grow, grow. I love you. Bless you. Bye-bye.